What's going on? My name is Alex with Portland Event Films, and today I'm going to do a little video. The A7 III versus the A7S III. I have a little YouTube studio in my house, and I bought the new camera, more for weddings and corporate, but I'm going to decide, should I use that camera or should I use my a7 III and can I really notice a color difference inside a controlled environment? So I'm gonna take out my color checker here. We're gonna do some tests with this. So right now I have both cameras rolling. Um, the A7S III, um, they're both set to the same picture profile. So I have the white balances set to 5,500. They're both in HLG. They're both set to 2020 color space and i'm going to see if i could really tell a difference uh in the actual color quality inside this uh controlled environment i haven't done the test yet but we'll we'll find out together um so i'm going to go in the computer and we're actually going to really push these colors around to see what it really takes to notice a difference between the 8-bit Kodak versus the 10-bit Kodak. I'm recording both these in camera. So we're going to go on the computer now, do a little bit of color grading, push some colors around and see if we can really notice a difference. I was really excited to get the A7S III, but when I did some color grading, I, I don't know, in my head, I was just going to think this camera is going to be magical. It's going to look totally different. I did notice a, a little bit of, of a color difference. I'm not getting those green tints. It's a little bit more on the red side. I'm liking the way that this footage is color grading and how much I can push it. But now I want to go back and see a comparison between these two cameras and can I actually really notice a difference? So we're going to head in the computer and we'll do a little color grading. Okay, so over on the left we have our uh, A7S III. Then on the right, we have our A7 III. Both of these were shot in HLG. Everything is exactly the same. Um, I cropped one. I zoomed this one in a little bit. This was shot on the 24 G Master. And then the one on the left was shot on the uh, GM 16 to 35. I think I had it set at about uh, 35, I think. Tried to frame them up uh, pretty much the same. I did do a little bit of zooming in um, on this one, so they're about the same size. So right off the bat, you can kind of see um, the A7 III has a little less contrast. Uh, the S3 looks like it has a little bit more saturation, um, not by much. But if I gave somebody both these uh, pictures, um, you would not be able to kind of tell which one was which. Um, and that's kind of what I found out in the grading that we'll go to here in just a little bit. So with the A7S III, we shot in the 10-bit Kodak. And then the A7 III obviously is the 8-bit. So we did some pretty extreme grading. Um, we did not, this is not how I normally grade, but I wanted to try to push it to its extreme to see kind of how each of them hold up. So what we have here is we threw on uh, the Leeming LUT. Uh, then we uh, drop down the lift, the ga uh, the gamma, uh, lift up the gain because you can see here the leaming is really, really uh, dark. Um, and then we just apply the both grades to the same. And if you pixel peep a little bit, um, you can tell that the A7 III has a lot more red in the skin tones. And that's pretty consistent with a lot of the footage that I found, whether that's indoors or or outdoors if you don't expose properly the reds really start to show versus the skin tone in the a7s3 there's a lot more green so if you didn't know so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here we're gonna click this black dot it's gonna tell us our black point so if you go over there and hover it will give you the RGB value. So if you're kind of wondering like what colors are in there, and you're not quite sure, this will really show you those colors. So you can see that it favors, you know, the red and the green. Um, so to me, these skin tones look a little yellowish, yellow green. 
um, versus over here, this is more of a red yellow. And I'm not sure if that's exactly the camera, but what I've found out is going from uh, Rec 709, it favors more of the reds versus the 2020 color space is a little bit more on the yellow green side. So it just uh, depends on your taste. Um, luminance value in the shirt looks a little bit uh, deeper here, a little bit darker, and this one just has a little bit more of that pop. So when it comes to shooting in studio, I think the A7S III is overboard, overkill. The average person is not going to really notice a difference. Now when we get to S-Log, outdoor, more of the extremes because these are pretty much at their native ISO and it's a really controlled environment and even pushing the colors to the extremes, you're not gonna really notice a difference. I know it's a big difference when we're getting to some more of the uh, extreme elements going into like the S-Log2, the S-Log3 where you really have to push it in that 8-bit Kodak. I notice a huge difference, you know, especially when you go in the higher frame rates the a7 uh three as soon as you go to 1080p at 60 frames a second you start pushing anything around it looks really bad but in studio in studio in a controlled environment i really don't think that you're going to notice uh that much of a difference like i said this is a pretty hard grade probably what i wouldn't normally push out um but i wanted to show you the differences so when right as of right now i'm going to keep my a7s3 kind of in the bag and save those for my corporate shoots my commercials and just for my in-home studio just use the uh, a7 III because there's really not that much of a difference if you guys have any more questions uh, leave them in the comments below thank you guys